There's something up there. The darkness. Uh, hunger. And the bottomless rage. No, I don't know much from demons or witches or malevolent spirits, but I can tell you this. Evil is real. And that mountain is evil. Hi, I'm Robert Conway, writer, director, producer of Skinwalker. So the idea of this project came about um, kind of during the corona lockdown. All of us were kind of going a little bit stir crazy. So uh, once some restrictions were lifted, you know, it was like, okay, what can we actually do now that could be interesting, fun, uh, but most importantly, you know, something that would be safe. It is a uh, essentially a monster movie set in the Old West. Um, I think the two genres that mix particularly well are horror and western. They kind of mix like whiskey and coke. My name is uh, Victorio Pope. I am from the White Mountain Apache Reservation. When you look at western movie, it's like looking back at time, who we were, who we are. That's how I look at western films. I think it all started probably when I was younger watching these older Western movies and watching these other Native American actors act and going out there and myself, I would try to learn how to horseback. I appreciate working with Victorio out of all these years and I would love to still continue to work with him in the future and with Robert as well. You know, the story of Skinwalker is uh, essentially based on, uh, partially based on a Native American myth that I've taken some liberties with fictionalizing a bit where um, essentially a uh, group of hunters come across this native burial site and they rob from it, which unfortunately for them, unlocks this ancient evil, which will not be you know, laid to rest until, until the, uh, the items that were taken are returned. So along the way, we introduced a lot of different colorful characters that we can kind of put together this ensemble where we're making hopefully what is a good cross between a good Western film and a good horror film. My grandma was a medicine lady and she taught me all the things and all she did was out into the traditional camp by the river, the sunrise dance. We went over there and that's how I became a singer from my elders that they talked to me about all the stories. It's just all in the stories that they gave them to me and that's how I know I know all these stories and songs. You know, we're making this with an incredibly uh, small cast, uh, small crew, less than 10 people on set at any time, um, which, you know, presents its own uh, unique set of challenges, but also opportunities. I mean, I don't often get to operate cameras on my movies, but uh, I'm gonna enjoy doing that. I'm doing a lot of test shoots. I mean, expanding on my knowledge base uh, a bit, which is a lot of fun. The oldest stories are told around the campfire. People looking out into the darkness and wondering what's out there. Um, I think <clears throat> the best horror movies and really to me the best dramas are the ones that uh, tap into primal fears, primal urges, primal instincts. Um, and I think in, in the current climate, with the, uh, with the, in a COVID-19 world, uh, learning, uh, figuring out how to tell a story and make a movie with those restrictions, with those limitations, I believe is going to um, is a breeding ground for some really interesting creative choices. When I was writing this script, I took the approach that I was writing a western that had supernatural elements in it, which I think gave me a huge advantage. I've done several horror films. I've done sci-fi horror films. I've done creature in the woods movies, which essentially that's what this is. This is a creature in the woods film. How was I going to make that different? One of the biggest problems we have with Creatures in the Woods films is they seem to just fly by. Uh, we don't ever get to know or care about anybody that's involved. Um, you know, what, what helps break that up is, is kind of taking the, the, the Western uh, people. People spoke very deliberately, you know, uh, from the uh, big history buff. I've read a lot of history, you know, Civil War uh, history, uh, Wild West history. People were very precise. 
Um, they had a beautiful use of the English language. I, I love the way that they spoke, and they were very descriptive. Even the common people, when they would speak, not the most educated, you know, your outlaws or your or your low-level, you know, deputy sheriff or whatever, you know, not just the rich, but the regular, average, everyday people. They spoke with with poise, and they were very descriptive, and they painted a beautiful picture of uh, of emotion with their words. And uh, so I just I try to make it where we know. Um, we know these people and we care about them and we're entertained by them and some of them we love and some of them we hate uh, but you know there, there's an emotional connection to them uh, from one side or the other. I think about what Clint Eastwood did with Unforgiven the way he treats violence in that movie um, the characters are all affected by it it's a big deal and bodies don't just disappear like in a video game there you have to deal with the consequences the aftermath of death and the and the way that affects people on top of all the supernatural stuff, grounding the horror in a truthful place makes for a great story. Basically the way this project came up was that I was just calling friends and saying, hey, do you guys want to do something now uh, at a time when, you know, it's, you know, uh, basically everything's kind of shut down. Um, so this is, in a way, it's, you know, yes, it's a feature film, it's a professional film. Uh, Encore Entertainment has agreed to distribute it. But it's also, in a way, just like a really fun thing I'm doing with my friends. And I'm writing these roles specifically for my friend, actor friends. So that's a huge advantage that we have. We're not doing really open casting on this. I'm just like, oh, you know, uh, you know, Charlie would be great in that, and Cameron would kill that, and Amelia's just gonna be amazing in this, and Dan's gonna be awesome in that. So that's just a really cool thing to do. And always working with people like Lori Haberman, production designer, my brother Owen, Self produced this. It's just a real fun thing. Um, it's kind of like, and we're filming up in the cool country, up in the woods where it's nice and cool. So everybody from Arizona definitely knows how fun that is this time of year. So I always like to say that big movies are made by committee and little movies are made by communities. Uh, and that's more true today than it's ever been. Um, we are asking for some donations to help make this movie as good as possible. Uh, it's a local Arizona movie, all local people. We're trying to invest in the local community, help businesses as much as we can by going back to work. And doing it in a way that's responsible, doing it in a way that's not foolhardy and, and making sure everyone's safe and comfortable. The more you, you help us out, the more films we're able to make, the more films we're able to bring for your audience. This is for you guys. This is what we're bringing you, not just us. For you guys too. So if you can, you know, this is a tough time to be making movies and uh, we pride ourselves on making the best quality movie we can regardless of budget. Um, but yes, donations are definitely appreciated. Uh, by my last film, Eminence Hill, we were able to raise a good amount of money uh, that really went a long way. We put all of it on the screen and I, I hope all of you that saw that movie who did contribute to that campaign were, were happy that you did because it's a film I'm particularly proud of. Um, you know, I can't say that about every movie I make, unfortunately, but Eminence was, and I think part of the crowdfund element made it something I was proud of because it did have this community effort to it uh, that I really appreciated. And uh, Everyone, you know, was invited to the premiere. Hopefully many of you made it. Uh, I know some of you weren't able to. Uh, and, you, know, you got your copies of the movie or your Blu-rays or whatever else was uh, in the different perks package. But it was a really fun movie to shoot. It was a really fun movie to edit. It was a really fun movie to premiere and share with the audience that really helped us create it. Uh, on, on the most important level, which is, you know, we're all more or less working for free, but we still need to, you know, put food in our stomachs and it's got to be a roof over our head and gas in the cars and that kind of thing we just have to cover. So uh, any little bit you could help out with would be greatly appreciated. And thank you for watching this video.